Hello everybody, welcome back. It is April the 5th. Wow, it's been a while. <laughs> but a great while, I'd say, honestly. Probably the best while I've had. No offense to the podcast listeners. Not the fact that I don't like to record a podcast, just the fact that we've had a lot going on, if you haven't noticed. Yeah, we have a lot to catch up on. Um, but first, as we all know, having great teammates is one of the most important things you can have, and that includes buying a house. When you use Phillips Real Estate, not only are you getting a great agent, but also recommendations for great local mortgage companies, local insurance companies, settlement companies, contractors, home inspectors, and pest inspectors. In fact, Davis was some of these real estate colleagues watching us play in the Final Four this weekend. And the people he recommends to his clients are the same people he recommends to his friends. So call Dave at 540-346-4552 and let Phillips Real Estate help you buy your next home with a trusted team of local real estate professionals that's Phillips Real Estate, 540-346-4552. I think I just about have that number memorized. Yeah, I hear it in my sleep. Yeah. We have no guests this week. It's just us, but we have a lot to talk about and a lot to catch up on. Yeah. Um, I want to first and foremost say that I have food poisoning. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Dive into that. I got to dive into that because my parents were here and they left this morning. Um, and last night we were like, sick, let's just have a cute little like barbecue, cook some steak um and then just up all night i was ill and this morning um so i'm never eating steak again i like strongly feel the urge to go vegetarian like i strongly do because i was just saying this when we went to puerto rico for a team trip we went to like a really nice steakhouse in charlotte and like it like it's one of coach brooks's favorite steakhouse like i was up all night again so like i just yeah 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 well i got really lucky with that because i was gonna eat with you guys but my dad had bought us salmon and so I made like a salmon bowl with cucumber tomato avocado uh like soy sauce all that stuff my Um, parents did not get sick though so I feel like this is either I had a really bad piece out of the three pieces to choose from that's really awful but it's either that or I'm just very sensitive yeah I don't know what else it could be but I'm not feeling anything so it's nothing that like that's what I'm saying too because we pretty much had steak and salad and you ate some of that like you had some like cucumber and stuff yeah oh well sorry but it's okay if Georgia falls asleep during the podcast. I look pale as a girl. Like, this is the most pale I've looked in a while. You look fine. She's extremely dramatic, but that's okay. Um, now we're going to recap our last two weeks, which if you guys have kept up with us at all, you probably have an idea of what's been happening, but we'll give you a little bit more behind the scenes stuff. Um, last time we talked, we had played our first two games of the NCAA tournament mm-hmm. in Castle. We had beaten Chattanooga and South Dakota State. Mm-hmm. And then we were saying that we were going to leave for Seattle soon. And so first thing we did was fly to Seattle for the Sweet 16 and Elite 8 games. Hopefully we were hoping to get that far. Spoiler <laughs> alert, we did. Um, <laughs> but the first game we had Tennessee. We had beaten them earlier in the year, um, but they had you know very different people at that time. Um, and it's not even very different. Like their main like WNBA prospect was like out yeah. under like a team condition, and like she obviously that makes a huge difference. Um, and they also had um, their five who later in the season had to like what medically stop for some. Yeah, she had to step step, step away, away for the season. Um, so they were just they were just different. Um, and we were also at that time seeing a lot of things on social media where people thought we were going to lose. Oh my god, um, which was very interesting <laughs> considering. You know, we had the ones. Go ahead. My thing, though, is, like, you can obviously have opinions on games. Fair enough. Go ahead. But it's it was, like, very, um, like, we're a joke. That's what it sounded like, that we were a joke. Like, the way that, like, people were saying it, like, and just, like, the demeanor and the tone was, like, Virginia Tech is a joke. And I was like, mm. I get predicting outcomes of games. People have a business in that. People bet on that. Like, I 100% get the thrill. But for you to, like, go around and, like, act like we're a joke – Took that a bit personally. Yeah, no, it really seemed like people were like laughing at the fact that people were. Yeah, like we had, <laughs> we have videos of people yeah, laughing of like a podcast that were was laughing at us, basically saying we were going to get bounced by Tennessee, <laughs> definitely not making the final four, whatever, whatever. But regardless to that, we just you know we're aware of all that stuff. But if anything, it just provided us motivation. But at the end of the day, we knew yeah how good we were. We knew what we you know had come there to do. We also um like. Not, like I'm saying, all all teams were great. Like, congrats to LSU, congrats to Iowa as well for not being the one seed. But if you look at the one seeds, <laughs> us in South Carolina, you know, that's what they predicted, right? As a one seed to get to the final four. What? Like, the teams to get to the final four as your as a one pre- seed. Yeah, well, yeah. Like, and I didn't hear anything about us being like, okay, we were solid. We, like, 
technically did what we were supposed to do. No. And that just goes along with like a lot of times in women's basketball, like there's certain programs, this is probably the same in men's, but there's certain programs that have this like certain level of respect because they've done like things in the past yeah. and whatever. And like Virginia Tech just doesn't have that history of you people know, so, were okay. saying sorry people were just saying stuff like we had never won or never been here before like a lot of other teams had never been there before either like that argument just makes no sense anyways you can go sorry i don't remember what i was gonna say sorry it's okay um yeah so Men's whatever history. we didn't have no that's not at all um but we didn't have virginia tech just didn't have that like um success in the past like they had only gotten to sweet 16 before so People just, when they think of Virginia Tech, they didn't think of like, oh, a good women's basketball team. So basically, if we were going to go up against Tennessee or UConn, who they thought we were, they were like, oh, they're going to lose. Right. Only because of like past things, not like giving us any credit for what we've done this year or like who we had on our team this year or anything like that. Um, but we were just aware of how good we were and what we wanted to do. So it didn't really matter. Right. Um, but that game actually did, you know, get close at some times. We were up 18 at like the beginning of the third quarter. Yeah. But then they ended up cutting it to one. They're a good team. Like, Oh, yeah. Especially if we, like, I think, um, like, we'll talk about Ohio State's press in a second. Um, but very different, like, very different pressing teams. Like, Tennessee was more, like, athletic. And to me, I don't know if this was – I don't I don't mean any insults, but it was, like, athletic, undisciplined press. Like, they just wanted to run and jump and, you know, get in the way. And Ohio State was a bit more, like, structured in their press. So, like, that was very different for us. I feel like that's why we a big chunk of our lead was gone. Yeah. Um, could have handled that way better. Yeah, because they did end up cutting it to one, but then KT came in with the clutch and one. Um, we were able to pull it through. Georgia had a career high, 29 points, which is insane. Um, and that helped us win 73 to 64. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we got our program's first Elite Eight. So that was really cool. Yeah. Um, I don't even remember the end of that game. Which game? The Tennessee game? Tennessee. All I remember is Tiso getting punched. <laughs> oh, yeah. And Tiso, if you guys have seen that video on Twitter, you know what we're talking about. She also, because you guys don't know this, but she was cramping. So that's why she was, like, kind of stopping. Because <gasps> after she got hit, she's, like, stopping in the ground. She's, like, bent over because she's cramping. She was, like, I was cramping that bad. I had no idea what she just did. And, like, no one saw it from that angle because, like, our bench was, like, Tiso was here and our bench was behind her. And she's running backwards getting, getting whatever. Punched. She basically got punched twice by a girl. Um, um, but I forgot, yeah. Coach Brooks game, didn't see it. Yeah, I, I didn't really either. I just I thought she was it. whatever. But because during that game, um, Tisol and Mo were uh, cramping so bad. So like we bad. looked like we were falling apart. Oh. And then after the game, we knew that we had to play in two days. We had yeah. to play Ohio State. So we were like kind of not freaking out, but it was like, okay, you guys need pickle to start juice, drinking. Pickle juice, pickle juice. Yeah, they had like tons of oh, electrolytes yeah. and all that stuff. Um, yeah. And that brings us to our <laughs> second game where we played Ohio State. Um it was funny, like, we love basketball, so we've watched it a ton. Um, and we were, like, talking about how in the beginning of the season we had watched their first few games. Like, they came out so hot. They played Tennessee as one of their first, like, big games of the season. And they just, like, pressed them and obliterated them. And I remember sitting on that couch and being like, I don't want to play Ohio State. Yeah. Please. I, yeah, I didn't know if I was going to say that, but pretty, um, pretty much. Like, we did say like, that. If was, like, they looked really, they, really no, they good. They looked really good. They're not, a really good team. Yeah, not that we were scared, but just, like, if we had our pick, we were like, oh, we, like, don't play that style. Like, we probably wouldn't. Yeah. Whatever, but it was funny that that's like who we ended up playing right. in the Elite Eight. Um, yeah, like George said, they were known for their press, but mm. thankfully we have a really good, fast, <laughs> skilled point guard named Georgia Amor. I was what we were watching there. We were there for the UConn game, and at the start UConn was up and they pressed and then kind of lost their way. And I just because one of like one of my friends from Croatia was on that team, so I was watching her and she's a point guard, and they were just like passing it, and I was like, I just I'm not that I was scared, but I was like, I'm just gonna have to bust my chops and just <laughs> run through it. But thankfully. After, like, the first, what, eight possessions, maybe five even, they pulled out of it. Yeah, because you didn't have any problems. Because, like I said, our incredible point guard, Georgia Amar, um, that is just so skilled. She was able to not make it a big deal. Thanks. So, so shout out, Georgia. Too. And shout out to our new press break. We put that in before the yeah, game. We worked a in... new press break. Coach Brooks. That's my favorite press break because I don't have to do anything. <laughs> I'm not in the way, as in we just let Georgia basically <laughs> do her thing. Yay, Georgia. Um, yeah, also shout out, Georgia had 24 points in that game, too. And you had 25. And a double-double, like a ridiculous double-double. And that ridiculous block at the end to, like, <laughs> seal the game. That was the greatest block I've ever seen. Yeah. Well, whatever. We ended up winning 84-74 to 74 and got the program's first final four. Georgia was the MOP, most outstanding player, whatever, in the Seattle something, whatever. Most outstanding player, congrats. <laughs> That's insane. Thank you. Um, 
but yeah, obviously she'll say this. Most importantly, we got to the final four. Oh my gosh. Which is crazy. It, it was crazy. That whole experience was absolutely crazy. Yeah. So now that we've covered the basketball of the first um, two games in Seattle, we just want to talk about Seattle a little bit. Mm-hmm. So I thought we'd do this thing. Okay, guys. Georgia was sleeping before. I was. I'm so sorry. No, no. Don't be sorry. She she, she was pointing. What? <laughs> Jesus. Food, Food poisoning. <laughs> so I wanted to let her sleep as long as possible. <laughs> but that's why I'm talking so much. So sorry. <laughs> and I also planned out the podcast. So we're going to learn together. Georgia and you guys are going to learn together. Any, any like movement I do, I just like slightly get more nauseous. So I'm just really trying to yeah, I re- if I really wouldn't want to have this this way, unfortunately, it's just how it is. But yeah. but anyway, so what we're gonna do is I have like my three. Don't read my three. Oh my I have God. my top three things um, from the Seattle trip, because fortunately in Seattle we were able to like do a lot Go of out things, and do a lot on our own. Like we had a lot of free time. We were also like in downtown and like mm-hmm. just like we were so close to like the mar- like what is it the public mar- market? Yeah, um, and I lo- like Seattle is probably one of my top american cities like i seriously don't take that lightly like yeah. if i will go again to see more because like even though we saw like a fair bit i don't think we saw everything we could yeah obviously. and that, that is definitely a huge credit to our location like we had an insane location um it was really convenient for us super walkable um so basically i have my top three things and then i want you to like think of your top you're reading mine no no <laughs> I, I just saw george's con oh we'll get there yeah. yeah um your top three things and then like we'll go like i'll see my third your third second second one yeah. one and then we'll see how it compares yeah okay do you want to start with your third my third or do you want me to go first you can think you go first okay so my third favorite thing from seattle was that we got to go up uh the space needle um that was really cool oh this has nothing to do with basketball did i already say that okay okay no but i, I got okay um yeah, we got to go up the Space Needle. Uh, it was really cool. I didn't know that, like, they had, like, the rotating thing. So you got to, like, stand there as, like, the, you yeah. know, like, rotated. You got to see the whole city, the water. Um, everything was really beautiful. We got to go outside and take a bunch of pictures, which was really cool also. Mm-hmm. Um, my only downside to that was how windy it was. Oh, it was disgusting. freezing cold and so windy. But, yeah, it was really cool to yeah. – because we've seen that in Grace Anatomy a million times. So to be there in person was cool. My three – was the fish and chips? I don't. I can't mm. remember what pub we went to, or what it was called, but it was like in the Pike Place, uh, whatever. But mm. the fish and chips were really good. Yeah, and you're a fish and chips gal. From I Australia. am. I love fish and chips, and it was just like I don't know. It was like just fresh, because like here's where people get it wrong: is when you like obviously fried fish, right? It's fried, but you know when like the batter is all soggy and it's just like the fit. You open the fish, it's like dripping oil. Like I don't like that. This mm. fish, it was like crisp on the outside you open it up and it was just like i don't know another word to say but fishy like there was no like extra stuff dripping out of it like it was like it really lacked the cheap oil yeah taste it was really good that place also had homemade soda or house made soda yeah, whatever and that was really good yeah um that's a good number three yeah. yeah um my number two for seattle is just the amount of coffee places that they had there um we like at our hotel there were enough coffee shops within two blocks that we could go to a different one like every day, twice a day for like four days. Like there was just so many options. Um, And it was also just really good, which I think Seattle is known for the coffee. Obviously that's where the first Starbucks was. So we got to see that. Um, The line was way too long, so we didn't get it. But yeah, we're just coffee lovers. So I think we love that part of it. My coffee was going to be my number one because I'm very much a coffee girl. And I also appreciated, this is a small detail. I don't know if you noticed, but like whenever we got like a medium, there would be like an Australian sized medium. Like there was no like ridiculous sizes. (laughs) Like they really had like, uh, uh normal sized sizes for me something like that like and the coffee it was like, more about the quality I it think, was than the oh quantity. God, the like i feel like sometimes so starbucks good. goes more like i we love starbucks but starbucks you know you can get it like trinty vinty whatever yeah. it's a bit more quantity no this was and it was just like not nothing about it was burnt or like overpowering it was just like a smooth coffee but because that was my number one i'll do my number two before you do your number one okay um shopping shopping <laughs> we shopped a fair bit i got some nice pieces yeah. we went to uniqlo which is like a um i think it originated in asia like somewhere in asia but they're like they're like at home in um like in melbourne they have the stores and i haven't really seen it over here and i just like was intrigued to go in they have really good basics but the coolest thing was is that to check out you get your items and you just chuck it in like a basket and based on i guess how it weighs or something like that it like tells you what you're getting 
and it's like says the price like i had like a crew neck a blouse and a t-shirt and i put them in the thing and you exactly like in and the color like that it was it was crazy yeah there's some did you buy anything from there? some sort of insane technology yeah i got a t-shirt too did you only do it to test out the <laughs> uh no but that was an added bonus i knew that they had those at uniqlo i didn't know if that one had it so when right. i found out it was yeah very fun um and my number one was the shopping oh we just we just love to shop guys um yep. and it was just really cool like the stores they had it's not even not even just like the buying stuff but just the experience of shopping in seattle like it was so beautiful like you could see the water from some stores like there were a lot yeah. like right by the pike place market um that target was really cool too yeah they had the target downtown like a block away from our hotel which was and, really convenient. and also like it was just like a nice <laughs> city like I've been to like Portland and like at, like places in, like Atlanta and stuff like that and like especially when it comes to, like homeless people like you go to a city there's going to be homeless people but like I was never once like worried in mm-hmm. I don't know like what kind of like I not worried but like I've ne- I was never like in Portland I was like oh my gosh like they That's very that's a me. very extreme. Portland is a very extreme. In Portland like I was walking with my cousin and my friend um and this homeless man was like trying to talk to this girl and my friend like they just like live in the city so they know what to do she was like hey like we were looking for you come walk with us and I was like how did you act so smoothly like I was losing my mind for her but like Seattle was just like very yeah the only, I, just, I love Seattle the, I, it's my top American city and that's a big thing for me to say the only um interaction really that we had with homeless people was when we were outside of a crumpet shop we had bought crumpets, um, which is so British and Australian. I loved it. I miss a good crumpet. And they were very, very good. Yeah, they were good. Um, but we were just sitting there like, I think we were doing research for our game or something. Like we were on our phones, but we weren't. We, we were, were like, looking talk- for something. We were talking about something together, like looking stuff up. And like three homeless people walked by like, you girls need to get off your phone. Like they were basically just telling us to put our phones on and actually talk to each other, which yeah. we were actually doing. But but like also I see it. <laughs> yeah. Like I see it. Like they were trying to help. Because, like, they funny. were older, too. But it was just, like, very weird interactions. Yeah. What else happened? Um, someone walked by, and he was like, three beautiful girls! Okay. And kept walking. We don't need to talk about it that. It was so <laughs> funny. Oh, I lost it. That's a pretty more... That's, like, a more traditional interaction. I it was so funny. Um, yeah. But, like, he didn't even look at us. He just pointed at us and kept walking. Sorry. Yeah. Overall, so Seattle was great. That um, morning, though, we were very delusional at the crumpet shop. Because that was after the Tennessee game. So like uh, exhaustion, yeah. jet lag, and we're like we're starving. Yeah. And then everything was just funny that morning. We were also eating our crumpets on the like porch or whatever across from a <laughs> gentleman's clubhouse. Can I say that? It was funny, and it just had like flashing signs of like things that I didn't want to see at nine a.m. I said, "Pay for your tuition." <laughs> And they kept flashing stuff about my- Oh, yeah, that was hilarious. Yeah. Um, so the scene was interesting, <laughs> but, you know, that's a city, I guess. There's just a lot of different things around. Yeah. Um, but still, it was really fun. Um, and then I just wanted to talk about one con. Did you have one con? Yeah, Seattle? probably the weather. Oh, yeah. Because I'm very much like a sun girl. Like, the Blacksburg weather, like, as soon as we came back, it was so sunny and so warm. And I just felt like... I love walking outside and, like, not feeling like a severe drop in the weather. Mm-hmm. Um. And, like, rain, I'm just – like, I'd rather – I never used to experience snow in Australia, but now I know I'd much rather snow than rain because rain's just an inconvenience. Mm-hmm. So the weather. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. Um, I think the weather would keep me from wanting to live there because uh, it was really cloudy and I think I need sun too. But I think, you know, as far as visiting goes, like, it's it's okay, but I, I wouldn't want to live there because of it. Yeah. Um, my con was that basically everywhere we went, it smelled like fish. Um, even, like, the basketball – Stadium, like, what? Yeah. The stadium, we walked in to go to the locker room and it smelled like pure fish, but we were also near the kitchen, so it makes sense. Yeah, so it could have been that, but, like, I don't know, I just smelled so much fish on that trip, um, which, you know, the fish and chips were good, so I guess it's it's worth it. It's a different It's different than black spray. I just feel like if you can smell fish, it's good fish. Like, I'd be concerned if it smelled, like, off or, like, if it had no smell at all, because then it's, like, how long? You know, like, crab sticks don't have any smell. They're fake. You know what I'm saying? No, I have no idea. Oh. I don't really eat fish like that, so it's not. No, honestly, nor do I. Yeah, you don't really. You haven't here. At least. I haven't in America. You're probably more at home. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, there's not that many like fish seafood options shops. around. Like, there's that many fish and chip shop in like my hometown, let alone like Australia. And like, it just depends what you want. You can get like a good high class one, like salt and pepper calamari, or then you can get like a cheap one from around the corner and call it a night. Like, yeah, it really depends. Yeah. 
Um, but that con wasn't enough to make me, you know, change my opinions on Seattle at all. Um, my overall rating for it was an eight. And that's really, that was mainly because of like the weather and stuff. I just wouldn't want to live there. Yeah. Um, visiting was great, but what about your rating? I would give it a nine and a half. The 0.5 that I don't give it for is the weather, but I'm aware that we can't control the weather. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's So why. they're doing great with what they have. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so that wraps it up for... Ooh, and okay. also, I don't, I don't know if I'm supposed to say stuff like this, but the University of Washington campus, because we went to a mall there, it was gorgeous. All my days are jumbling together. We've been so many places. Because we went to Shake Shack at that mall. Before, oh, like, yes. before we watched the Ohio State. That was part of the shopping, yeah. Yeah, but like that, like just like the, it had a good balance of city, but like greenery and mm. it was just gorgeous. Yeah, I had no idea that uh, Washington was, like that the course. University of Washington was like, like in, in Seattle. Seattle. Um, so that's really cool. Yeah. Um, for all you guys that go there, nobody. For if, the if people you, that go there, that's really cool. If you're an alum and you listen to this podcast, what a great experience you had. <laughs> um, yeah, so that wraps it up for Seattle and Washington. Uh, then <clears throat> we had to leave for Dallas the morning after our game, right? We did, yeah, it was because we played on Monday. We had to leave on Tuesday. Yeah, it was, it was early too. Really early. Um, for us, at least, having played a game, we were exhausted. Oh, exhausted. Um, and going off that, being exhausted, as soon as we get off the bus at the airport, we walk up, whatever. And before we can get on our bus, uh, oh, no, when we walk off the plane, sorry, before we get on the bus, we're greeted by a DJ and a dance floor. <laughs> and I don't know if you guys, like, it was pay a, attention. It was a, I was sweating. It was a dream. I was, I was just, like, exhausted coming out, and then you got a DJ on the decks doing yeah. mashups, and you got pictures, and there's, like, a dance floor, and a picture station it was like a slap in the face but it was very cool yeah no it was really cool but i don't know if you guys pay attention to like the vibe of our team but we're not at least like so, a lot of us aren't really like ooh, let me get out there and show off my moves you know i can't dance like that so you can casually you were just tired i was very tired it was also just like a little bit awkward but nevertheless really cool it was very cool um a fun experience uh then we just went to the hotel and um at the hotel they had like a cool players lounge for us uh, yeah I had like Xbox, Nintendo Switch, like snacks, Jenga, <laughs> a lot of gifts. A lot of games, yeah. Um, and then our rooms had like Final Four blankets and pillows and um, all of that good stuff. It was very cool. And like, let's talk about the police escort for a moment because that yeah. was the best police escort I've ever seen. We got they stopped the train for us. Yeah, there was literally like a train on a track that had to. I don't even know how they do. That. I don't even know how they stopped in time. Yeah, no, they probably like, like put everyone unaware like in dallas that was dallas. crazy um, i'm telling you like two cars six motorbikes yeah all with flashing lights yeah um it was really cool uh but the players lounge experience i just have to mention this that whole thing made me want a nintendo switch so bad um i'm really considering it especially now um sneak peek this isn't a sneak peek at all but i'm coming back next year so Ooh. i'm gonna be living in this apartment for another year and i just feel like we need a switch here I feel like it'd be fun. Would you play with me? I don't even know. Yeah, I would. Okay. I would. Then maybe I'll consider it, guys. We'll see. We'll see. Um, so basically, we just hung out that day. We were really tired. And then the next day was Wednesday. And we just had a ton of media. Yeah. We had, like, we had a media from like 9 or even like... We had to leave by 8. It was like 9 to... I want to say like 12 something. Yeah, I don't know. It was just like a lot of stations like Go, Go, Go. Yeah. Which is fine. Um, really cool that we have the opportunity. We're not complaining about any of this. This is a very cool experience. It was just yeah. a lot. Like, they had to, like, obviously, for everyone's sake, like, get all, like, the preview stuff for the games and, like, interviews to play, like, on TV. Like, that whole experience is, like, really cool. But these people work efficiently. They waste yeah. no time. Yeah, which Cause imagine, I appreciate. Yeah, you also have to do it for, like, six or seven people in every team. Like, yeah. Um, but also that day on Wednesday, we got to go to this Nike event. Do you want to talk about that? Ooh. Yeah, so we hop on the bus and they pull into a, uh, I think it was the practice gym for, but we're in a car park and there's like a huge Nike van that they've like gutted out and like renovated and we go and make our own um, duffel bags, like our decorations, put our names on it and they just filled it with Nike stuff. Basketball shoes, slides, sweatpants, yoga robe, a book, like essential oils, uh, uh, in, incense, is that what it is? Incense is what you burn, I think. The sticks Isn't that it? smell good. Okay, I don't know. Oh, because it's not a diffuser. No. What is, is it incense? I don't know. I don't know. I guess. And then cough, like socks, 
sports bras. Like, it was just crazy. Yeah. That bag was huge. T-shirt. T-shirt, yeah. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff, so that was really awesome. Um, everyone was very generous, this yeah. whole experience. Oh, yeah. We got, like, a lot of stuff, which was really cool. Um, and then, like I said, we just had, like, media practice. Uh, and then the next day on Thursday, we had more media. And then we had an open practice, which mm-hmm. was interesting. There was, like, music playing the whole time. Kids screaming. Yeah. Um, they were, like, doing interviews during it. Like, not with us. But... Yeah. It was cute, though, because at this point in time, my parents had landed. And, like, that's the first, like, they got to go to that. Did they? They went to the practice, yeah. I don't remember. Oh, we didn't. I don't really see them. But, yeah. I just have, I just have like, a sense, <laughs> a family sense that when they're close, it bings off and I look at them. Yeah. Um, but that, it was cool to, like for them to watch that because I told them, I was like, this is going to be nothing like you've ever experienced before because just like as a viewer in previous years, like yeah. that's insane. That's what it hit me, even though like we had done so much media stuff, but when we had that open practice with like all the cameras and all the people watching. Like that's when yeah. I was like, wow, this is really a production. Like this isn't just yeah. like a normal game anymore. It's like the biggest event for women's basketball each year. Yeah, Final Four for sure. Um, so that was cool, but also a little crazy. Um, yeah, then I don't know what else we did. We we had another practice after and like went over and just got some more shots up at a different place. Um, yeah, game planned a bit. And then came back, dinner, got ready for the game. And then Friday, we had our game against LSU. Um, you know, it was a very physical, it was a competitive game. Yep. We, you know, came up a little bit short, but um at the end of the day like I'm so proud of our team um for getting to that point um obviously LSU went on to win the championship super deserving they played incredible they played um, really hard they played oh so hard God. and they take no crap from no one no, <laughs> from sure. no one not saying that like we're out here giving crap because we're not <laughs> we're very much keep to ourselves but like in terms of like outside noise they don't take any of that no um so yeah congrats to them uh, you know, we had our moments in that game where we played really well, but yeah. we just didn't do it consistently enough to come out with a win. Yeah. But we still went to the final four this year and we got an ACC championship. Yeah. So a couple more banners will be hanging in Castle. I cannot complain. Rings. Yeah, we'll get some rings. Um, so overall, like I think pretty good. How, yeah, how the year turned out, I can't complain. Um, it doesn't mean winning doesn't or losing doesn't sting, but. It did sting. And that's what people, like, don't get is, like, going through, like, well, I got flamed on Twitter for smiling and hugging Coach Mulkey. But that woman was telling me some very, very generous things. So, obviously, I'm going to be happy that she acknowledges that. But, boy, when we got in that locker room, it was tears. Yeah. Bowling. Okay. Um, Sorry. I was. No, I'm – yeah. But I think a lot of that was, like, it was a lot of our our teammates' last go-around. Um, so they knew that they would never play uh, another college game. And a lot of them had played for five years. It's been their life for the last five years. Yeah. Um, and also our last time playing with them, um, which I've loved playing with them so much. Like, obviously, we've done incredible things together. So yeah. for that to come to a close was just, like, heartbreaking, honestly. But yeah. also we felt a huge sense of pride. Um, and we'll carry that on for the next however many months. Um, well, for the rest of our lives, honestly. Oh my God. We'll come back for the reunion and see our banners, and that'll make us super happy. But yeah, um, yeah. yeah, I mean that first game back next year is gonna be crazy. First game, yeah. Oh, when we drop the, the banners, banners and yeah, all that stuff. There will be a lot stuff. to recognize and appreciate, uh, yeah. and I'm very thankful to our teammates for giving us the opportunity to do that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that sums up our season, which is insane. You guys have been along for like most of it. Yeah. I think. I don't remember where we, we, tried, we started this. We but... tried to keep it up. I think we did it from Bahamas. I remember it was like our third episode. Oh, right, right, right. So, that, well, but that was like our fifth and sixth game. So it might have been like the whole, geez, um, you've been along with the ride. I'm so excited to listen back to these in how yeah. many years. This is like a huge thing for us to us, like listen back and see what we were like talking about and thinking like at different times because you like it, we get so wrapped up in everything like we're, we'll probably talk about it but like Dallas like I like don't really remember much of Dallas or like mm. I just remember the game really yeah same I was gonna say like how we did a like detailed review of Seattle like we can't even do that for Dallas because we were always doing stuff we were always like yeah. so um focused preparation all that stuff so we really yeah. didn't and, like, the season just goes that fast. Like, there's not enough time to, like, 
be content with like what you're doing because it's like oh we have a game the next time the game the next time you should get wrapped up in like what's happening next so it's like cool for us to like reminisce or like yeah um just like appreciate what's going on in the moment yeah um but thank you guys for coming along this isn't even the end but i'm like I don't know. I just want to say that. This is the um, next section. Yeah. Um, this is all of our segments now. That, that was just our back. That was the recap. Yeah. Told we'll, you we we'll, had a we'll lot. We'll make the end um, not too long, but getting into our next sponsor, 310 Rosemont. Um, they say, congratulations to Liz and Georgia and Virginia Tech women's basketball. 310 Rosemont has been so thrilled to work with Queens of Castle during the Hokies' incredible season. As a small business rooted in the Blacksburg community, it has truly been an honor to support and witness this team through their many accomplishments this year. We are celebrating the close of the season by offering 30% off an item of choice for 30 plus Hokie wins. Mention Queens of Castle at checkout in store in Blacksburg to redeem this offer. That's an incredible offer. 30%. You, you guys don't even know because I went there with my parents yesterday and just had the best chat with Mary. <laughs> um, and they, like, it's cool to hear the perspective too because obviously like she was in Blacksburg like when our games were playing and she was just saying how like the bars were packed, like Blacksburg had some life and it was just like cool to hear that perspective because obviously like we don't see any of that. Um, and I did buy some jewelry because now I can wear it because I'm not having to take it off and on all the time. Mm-hmm. And oh, just like the loveliest, like not even Mary, but her just like her staff, like just a lovely vibe. Yeah, it's great in there. So go visit them and thanks for sponsoring Roommate Report Card. Georgia, what is, what do you give me? Or anyone? Well, we've been traveling so much. We've said that the last, like, six I know, weeks. <laughs> but, I mean, I haven't had an issue with you. I would say A. We've you, I used her DoorDash today to get myself some yeah. <laughs> crackers and Pedialyte and um, Icy Poles <laughs> to settle my stomach. So I'll give it an A. Yeah. I don't have DoorDash Plus or whatever it is. I guess you have to cancel that. Dash now. Pass. Oh, I'm probably not going to cancel it. I don't know. I fell in love with it. Um, I'm giving you... Okay. This isn't... Okay, this I w- is kind of funny. Okay, okay, so don't get offended. I'm not offended. Okay, I'm giving Georgia a C because she gave Winnie the same steak that she ate and got okay. sick, and then Winnie is now puking and she's a bit <laughs> ill. Don't be concerned. She eats stuff pretty often. She'll be fine. But um, like mother, like daughter. Yeah, they're both ill right now. Both got uh, it. She's asleep. We were both sleeping like 40 minutes. She ago. slept all day. Yeah. So that that's all I have to say. But that's fine. You're you're not feeling well either. So. Don't take it personally. I, I don't mean it. <laughs> um, that's all for my report card, I think. Now, that's so Raven. And this segment is sponsored by the same book we've been talking about, The Cornell Effect, A Family's Journey Towards Happiness, Fulfillment, and Peace. It's an up from the ashes story about Cornell Cranham, who's born a little bit over a pound, faced incredible challenges in his early years, and how his attitude, passion for life, and sheer determination transformed him and ultimately those in his presence. Dr. John Cranham, the author, launched the book in February 2020 on the Sons of Saturday podcast. To date, it has sold over 100,000 copies and climbed to number five on Amazon in its category. This is a tale about a real hokey family, and if you're wondering if it's worth the read, check out the reviews. It will make you laugh, cry, and be inspired to live your life to the fullest. Do yourself a favor and go to Amazon and order a copy. Um, so that brings us into that. So, Raven, Georgia, do you have anything? Yeah, I do. So yeah. my birthday was two days ago, April 3rd. Um, thank you to everyone that wished me a happy birthday. Um, and that wasn't me trying to be, a, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Um, so Raven's been on my line about going to Greensboro and choosing like a birthday lunch dinner place. Like she's obsessed. Well, yeah. So backstory, my family, like my mom always wants to take out like whoever's birthday it is, they get to pick where we go to dinner. Like that's like the one thing that we do. So yeah. And, um, honestly, I just, it's well, yesterday, how did this even happen? Like, I just haven't chosen. And um, this morning I was, because I was up all night, I was trying to sleep and it was like 10, 11. I got four consecutive calls from her and texts. Yeah. And she's just like. <laughs> and she calls me to ask Georgia multiple, multiple times. She like calls me, hey, Georgia Lee, I need to know where you want to go for your birthday this weekend. I need to reply to her. But yeah, you do. She's very, very hooked on. Because I think she just goes, what what does she figure out what she wants from the menu? She puts yeah. together. She just gets excited. Yeah. She does. It's very cute. Um, she has called me. It's four forty-one right now. She's called me nine times today, which isn't even that much, honestly, for her. I thought it would be more. Um, but she's very excited for your birthday. She is it's dinner, um, and she also just loves you. Um, she does. I love her. Is that it for her? Oh, you're nice. Does she do? 
I don't know. I have one. My um, mom and dad came and she was just with them the whole time too. She sent me a selfie when she met dad. Like she's met dad before, but when she saw him for the first time in ages. And she, it was like the most genuinely like happiest I've seen her in a selfie in a while. Like there was like life in those eyes. Like it wasn't just like a fake smile. She was looking good. Yeah, I know. Phil is. George's dad is like her favorite person ever. Um, <laughs> He's still her lock screen on her phone. A picture of her dad and <laughs> my dad. From two years ago. From so long ago. Hasn't moved. She just loves it. Um, so that's a good, that's a raven. Uh, mine is a little different. Um, my dad and Raven were lucky enough to be able to go to a Hornets game last night. Um, and this actually ties you into it because yep. you had gotten my dad when we went to a Hornets game, you'd gotten him a Muggsy Bogues t-shirt. Backstory on that, he played with him, right? Yeah, he played with Muggsy. So he, he always brings Muggsy up because he's short and I'm short too and he always brings him up. So I was like, I'm going to get this man a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. So somehow that t-shirt... Um, the only Charlotte Hornet stuff that my dad has, that shirt ended up um, in Raven's hands for the night. So she ended up wearing that. Um, and my dad was forced to go buy the exact same shirt again so that he could wear it also. Um, Raven loves t-shirts. That's something about her. She does. So she got a new one for a collection. Um, and now she's a Hornets fan, I guess. That's cute. That is very cute. Um, but also, this is really random, but she just sent me a picture of her yogurt this morning for breakfast. <laughs> Um, what did it have in it? <laughs> it just had chocolate chips, but it was literally like chocolate chips with a little bit of yogurt. Um, and she does that a lot. She likes to feel healthy when, you know, in reality, it's probably not the most. But I, I love good yogurt and chocolate chips, so I can't dog her at all. Yeah. Um, that's just, that's so Raven. So yeah, that's all for that. Yeah. Um, now we have Song of the Week, which is brought to you by Hokey House. Head down to Hokey House. For some great music, have some great food, listen to your song of the week or play our song of the week, what you're feeling. Um, Georgia, do mm-hmm. you have a song of the week? This is also why I like Seattle, because my song of the week is Trippin' Up by the Jungle Giants. But we were, I forgot where we were, oh but God. they were playing like, I don't even just want to say like a one off song, like they were playing Australian indie music, mm-hmm. but I cannot remember what the store was. I remember, we went to a lot of stores. Do you remember guys. me saying it? I was like, Yeah, I do. I don't know if it was like somewhere we a coffee shop mm-hmm. or what, but. Yeah, it, yeah, they were playing really good music there. Um, my song of the week is Taylor Swift, All the Girls You Loved Before. That's like one of her new singles from Lover era, whatever that she put out. Um, and it's incredible. And I hope she plays that when I go to the concert on April 30th. I can't wait. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's all for our segments. Uh, now we just had a few things to talk about. Um, yeah. I mentioned it earlier, but yeah, coming back for my fifth year, if you don't have Instagram or Twitter. You're welcome. <laughs> Georgia can take all the credit. Um, it's actually just because of Winnie. I can't leave Winnie. She's so <laughs> cute. Um, and I would miss her cuddles. So yeah. very excited about that. Happy to um, just have another year at Virginia Tech in Blacksburg. Um, but also kind of made that decision because, well, not because, but it just it worked helped. out. Yeah, it worked out that um, me and Kayla bought our plane tickets to Australia for the summer. I tweeted so, that I feel like people took it as a joke. Like I was being dead set. Yeah, like we actually have plane planes booked to australia so yeah we're super excited to go see georgia and her neck of the woods um yeah and guess <laughs> what we're gonna take him to the great barrier reef and we're gonna snorkel and we're gonna go to a crocodile farm and it's my favorite crocodile farm and i'm not even joking this isn't me being sarcastic you go on a boat into like the um river and they put like ch- like uh obviously dead chickens on a stick and like they hang it over the boat and then crocodiles come up and bite them out of the air it's so sick so can't wait for that. I'm going to uh, learn a lot about Australian uh, living. Not even, like, that's probably going to be the most, like, touristy thing. Like, I've never been to the Great Barrier Reef, so I'm, like, excited for that. Um, yeah, right. But, like, it's, like, obviously where I live, just cool to show them around since they took me in their homes. Um, and then just, like, I live, like, close to Melbourne, so I'll probably do, like, a lot of shopping, go to a footy game, netball game, because I see a career for this one in netball. You tell you go and watch a netball game, look at goal shooter GS, and you can't tell me that for like the lack of beating they cop, it would be great for her. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll probably play there? that. Maybe food, we'll... coffee. I have a list of like just food, and we need to do like a whole episode on like preparing for our Australia oh, yeah. trip. Um, and that brings us into the next point. Um, just kind of talking about podcasts outside of the season. Obviously, it's going to be a little different because we don't have like our games to recap and stuff. But I think we're still planning on doing it um as long as you guys are wanting that at yep. all um because we're still gonna be doing really fun things this summer and i think it'll be cool like we said earlier to document that be able to look back on that um and hopefully you guys are interested so yeah 
we're looking forward to that. Um, <clears throat> also, subscribe to our YouTube channel. The last podcast got like over 5K views on our YouTube. Um, and we have a little bit over 500 subscribers, which is good. But make sure if you're watching our video, please subscribe because it will help us uh, in the long run. Um, we, I will film a video of them holding a koala. <laughs> yeah, because we want to yeah. post other stuff on there. Um, we're looking to do that maybe like day in the life uh, in the spring in our off season. Um, workouts, because we still workouts. like we still have workouts. We still do all of that. It's just like we don't do like the long practices and games. But it's like I feel like that's not really what like people don't really know what happens when the season's not on. Mm-hmm. It's still a lot of preparation. It's still a lot of. Yeah. Like for like well obviously like for us we're obsessed so we're always gonna be shooting and stuff like that Working out, um, yeah and we just like it too so yeah I love it. we can show that we can like show what we eat in a day and stuff I feel like that's kind of interesting you wouldn't want to see what I'm eating today <laughs> okay, actually well, it's actually funny because I have crackers but I've been putting Vegemite on them which is I'm, delicious I'm glad that you're enjoying that it so takes me back to when I was a kid and I was sick <laughs> well whatever you eat I want you to eat. So, um, so yeah, we can do that. I think we're going to try and like record our like Australia trip. Yeah. Um, show what we're doing. So we need to get a camera for that. Um, but yeah, we're looking forward to that. If you have any, any thoughts on what you'd want to see, let us know. Um, but just thanks for listening this whole season, guys. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been really it. fun and yeah, that's all I got. Same. Same. Yeah. All right. Well, You're almost uh, yeah, I did almost forget. Thanks for that. Um, with the basketball season coming to a close, the next big Hokie Athletics event is a spring football game. Every year, this is a big real estate weekend with Hokie fans coming into town and looking for real estate while they're in town. If you're thinking of putting your house on the market, there's still time to have it listed by spring game weekend. Call Phillips Real Estate at 540-346-4552 to find out how Dave can market your property. There's a lot of buyer demand out there and still not enough inventory to meet it. So this is the perfect time to put your house on the market. That's Phillips Real Estate at 540-346-4552. And Dave can get your home ready to sell in this spring market when lots of Hokies are coming to town. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Phillips Real Estate. That closes off this episode. Mm -hmm. Um, It's not the end. It's just this episode. The beginning of a new season. A new um, season. Yeah. 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 So thanks for season one. (laughs) Just kidding, I don't know how this is technically going to be. Whatever. Um, I'm Liz. I'm Georgia. And we're Queens of Castle. Thank you, guys.